Hello everyone. Welcome to Physiotherapy in Lesotho. www.physioinlesotho.ch. You are listening to a podcast from one of our physio workshop in Lesotho. Your speaker is Ndade Tuso, W Fasa, a qualified physiotherapist. TB physiotherapy. We developed in the last years a concept how to work with TB patients. So when we talk about TB physio, then we mean TB patients in the hospital. Because when they are no longer in the hospital, they do exercise at home. So TB physio, this program is meant to the TB patients in the hospital. What we understood is that many of TB patients when they're so sick, they get somehow passive. They have pain. The development is slowly, they heal very slowly. They have to be a long time in the hospital. Maybe they were already a long time sick. So somehow they get tired of that disease, they get tired of the treatment. Sometimes they get depressed, they are not nourished well maybe. So they tend to become passive. And it's quite often that a TB patient He likes to do nothing, just he's in the bed, he feels sick and and he's not inspired to be really active. This attitude is something, it's like a symptom of of a severe TB patient. And we have to overcome that because we see when TB patients are active, participating, lively, when they're going outside to the sun, things go better. So we do with them exercise. But what we could see as well that patients who are very sick, they cannot really participate in the group, the TB exercise class. They need something more. So we developed this TB physiotherapy concept, which is made of three groups of patients. So I will explain you now the group and I will tell you what we are doing with these patients. So we understand and we can do the proper physio to these patients. So group number one is the very weak patient. You all have seen this weak TB patient. They are very sick, they have fever, they are lying in the bed, they are maybe on bed rest, they are coughing a lot, they are really not in a good shape, bad breathing, Um, they even have lost appetite, they're sweating at night, they're really typically TB patients and they're very sick. Most of them are very thin as well, isn't it? And they have pain when they are coughing and they tend to be a little bit flexed like this. So in a kyphotic posture. They tend to be flexed, they are sitting or they like to lie a lot. They are not walking around, they are not going outside, they are not chatting with people. They prefer to be in the room, they prefer to be in the bed, and they just prefer to be rolled together in this kyphotic flexed posture. So the spine is flexed, the chest is squeezed, is closed here in the front, the shoulders are coming forward, maybe a little bit upwards, and they are just like this. What we can see that these patients, they are very sick, they are weak, they breathe superficially, up here. They are not stretching out, let's do a deep breath, no, they do superficial breathing. They are not ventilating the lung, not fresh oxygen is coming into all parts of the lung, only a little bit. They tend to be stiff and tight in the muscles. And their accessory lung muscles, the muscles here on the neck, they work a lot, so they get tight in the neck as well. These patients, they are lacking movements. One, because they are weak and feverish. And the other thing is they are just lying, maybe sitting a little bit, lying, but they are not stretching out, they are not walking. So somehow they are suffering of the TB, but they're suffering as well of the complications of that. That means the bed rest, uh, immobility, 
And then, of course, they lose contact with the others. They get somehow deprived of social contact and they tend to become a little bit depressed. And of course, they are maybe afraid as well if they survive or if they don't survive. So psychologically, it's tough to have bad TB. So this type of patient, this is the very, I call it the weak patient. What are we doing in Fisi with them? First of all, we do individual physiotherapy, one-to-one -one physiotherapy. We go to them to the bedside. We do physio on their bed. So I go to them and I do the bed rest program. So when they are so weak that they cannot move themselves, I do assisted movement. I say, let's move the legs, let's move the arms. And if you do the movements with them, you will see after a few days, they start to move themselves. It gets easier then. So I go and treat the patient on his bed and I do uh, movements, assisted movements to legs and arms. We do all the movements as we learned. Then I will do debriefing exercises with them, lying on the bed deep breathing exercises, one after another. What you can see sometimes when they start to breathe deep, they cough immediately. So they avoid deep breathing because a cough is coming. And then maybe they have pain when they are coughing. So do it gently, just slowly, not too much in the beginning, but then slowly, all the time a little bit more, that they can expand the chest on the end. When they start to breathe, calm them down, wait a little bit. Because in this phase, when we push too much, they can even vomit while, while coughing. So calm them down, wait a little bit, but then try again. Sometimes in these cases, I do three deep breaths with them. Then it's already enough. And the next day I will do five. And the next day I will do ten. Try to do these movements and these deep breathing exercises. Don't force them too much. But don't do too little. So we do it but very gentle and if they get in a big cough, calm them down, wait a little bit. Then we teach them the exhale cough. I say, <coughs> you exhale and then you cough it will be more comfortable for them. And of course you teach them hygiene, how to put the hand, to use the Kleenex or the sputum mug. And when they cough, always ask them to look to the other side, that you are not in the blow of the wind from them. In these cases you can use the straw as well. You give them their own straw, so they breathe in, and they blow out by the straw. Every time when you blow out through the straw, the next inhale will be deeper. This is a reflex, it's automatically. So it helps them. I turn them to the side. I say, now lie on your left side. And we place them nicely on the left side. And then I do vibration on the right side. When the people is very weak, when they are very sick, don't do really percussion, it's too tough to them. We do vibration, gentle vibration during the exhale. They breathe in, during exhale, during exhale you do gentle vibration. If it's not so sick, maybe not, they have no fever, they're not so painful, you can do gentle percussion. So if my patient is on that side, I do percussion, do vibration, and then I leave them there for five minutes. You let them on the side position so the lung is drained. And then after five minutes you come back and then you turn to the other side and you do the other side. Very often I do two TB patients together. I'm working on this one, and then when he's on the sideline position, I go and start with the next one. And then I will come back, 
and I finish the first one and then I go back to the next one. As we did yesterday with the data with the swelling, we went three times back to him. We are still in the same room, so we are working we're going forward and backward that we give him the time. So this side lying shall be maybe five minutes. It can be in a very weak patient that they don't like to lie on the side. So you do it for a moment, a one minute, next day, two minutes. You just increase gently. If you can see they are very tight in the neck muscles, shoulder girdle muscles, because they are short in breath, massage them. Do them a very gentle neck and shoulder girdle massage. It will loosen these muscles, they will relax and normally they breathe better. Of course, they will be in semi position, half-sitting position. The patient who is so sick on the lung normally cannot lie flat. Later, I like when they learn to lie flat, even going on the belly, because this kyphotic position, this posture, is somehow increased while sitting all the time. But in the very weak patient, Normally you cannot say life flat, it's too tough to them. So when they after a few days are a little bit better, we do more active exercise to them. And then I mobilize him. I mobilize to sitting posture, sit them on a chair and say now for 15 minutes, just stay on the chair, wait here, hold yourself on the bed and try to stay here. And then we do stand up exercise. Patient is sitting, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. We just exercise the legs that he gets enough strength to stand up. We do some standing exercises, just stand there for a minute to get sure to be able to stand. Very simple things. Sometimes I tell them lean to a wall. And just wait here in standing that they get used to the vertical position. In the meantime, I'm treating the neighbor. So when they're a little bit better, we help them to be mobilized to a chair and to standing position. And we exercise this movement, sitting up, sitting on a chair, standing up, sitting down. We challenging a little bit, we exercise that so that they are comfortable. This we do in the very weak phase. If they have sharp pains on the chest, which very often comes, they are coughing a lot and then they are tearing the muscles. If you touch yourself between the ribs, you can feel there are muscles. So when you cough every day, maybe 100 times, then you get a pain there. Very often this pain is not from the lung. Sometimes it's from the lung. If they have infusion, things like this, then the pain comes really from the organ. But very often it's here, the chest as well. So when I can touch here the muscle between the ribs and I feel there are painful spots, I will massage them with placum oil. Placum, remember, helps to open the bronchi. The smell, the perfume of eucalyptus opens the bronchi. So in these cases I'm using placum oil and I'm massaging that very gentle, not too tough, in this weak patient, do a very mild physio treatment. Don't do too much, just do it gently. So with eucalyptus oil, I don't use, let's say, MSO. Because in this very acute phase, the bronchis are so sensitive. If you have a strong smell like MSO, it's too much. It's somehow irritating them. So wait with MSO. In the beginning, we do just eucalyptus oil. If there is a tree next to the hospital, fetch a bunch of eucalyptus leaves. Put these leaves in the feta, in, in, in the pillowcase, and the patient will sleep on it. And during the night, he will smell this eucalyptus perfume, and it will help him to open the bronchis. And it's disinfecting the bronchis a bit, so it helps to heal. It's so simple, and it works. And when you look to the eucalyptus tree, look that you find that one with the little balls. This is eucalyptus globulus. That, it's the healing tree. It's the, the medicinal tree. There are others, they have no balls. They are not as potent as that. Is that is eucalyptus, what? Hmm? Those balls. 
the leaves you collect, not the balls. But the medicinal tree has balls. The other play comb without the balls is not the medicinal tree. So go to the tree where you can see the balls. But then you harvest the leaves. Harvesting the leaf, there is something we can observe. Take the nice, the beautiful leaves. There are always leaves which uh, maybe they are a little bit brownish or they're already dry. Or there are some leaves where the birds were making caca on top. No. So this one you don't take. You take the nice leaves. The green ones. The green. And when you touch, they are soft. The green. Clean and green leaves. And when you are taking them down, hold the branch and take them off like this. Because sometimes when you just pull down, eucalyptus is breaking easily. So we are destroying the plant. We don't want to destroy the plant, we want only harvest. So hold the branch and take it off like this, so you won't damage the plant. And after a while you will have new leaves there. If you pull them down and then you have a big branch broken, the tree is hurt. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So we go and fetch the fresh trees, uh, leaves, and then we put them into the pillowcase. After a week, you change it. If that patient tells you in the morning, oh, that smell is too strong, mm -hmm. so take off some leaf. Maybe you had a big bunch of leaf. Put half in it. You can make a dosage. As less you do, as less strong it is, isn't it? I always suggest in the TB ward, we can boil a little bit a pot of water put some leaves in it. So there is a little bit moisture and you have that smell of eucalyptus. At least once a day, do it for one hour. It's like a steam inhalation in the room. It helps. It's easy and in winter when the stove is on, it's easy to put a pot of water there. So we, we can use that and it's very simple and... Especially in winter. Yes. The stove is on and you can do it, yeah. And in winter when the stove is on, easily the air gets too dry. So we put some water on the stove so it is not too dry, the air. Because for these patients, when the air is too dry, it's a bit irritating. It's irritating as well when it's too moist, it's too humid. But a little bit is okay with that. We should not use ointments on the body which have an aggressive smell, even body lotions which have a, a strong smell. Remember, in all body lotions there is are chemicals. So chemicals can irritate the sick bronchies. So we should not use strong smelling things. But with eucalyptus you are going fine, or in winter even a little bit of guena. Guena helps as well to relax the bronchies. We had yesterday that patient, you remember, he was coughing and then had this sound. The bronchies were tight. To a patient like this, I would give a bit of guena leaves in his pillowcase. Guena is dilatating, is relaxing the visceral muscle, the mean the muscle of the bronchies and the muscle of the intestines. So if somebody has cramps on the, on the stomach, he shall drink guena tea, peppermint tea because it's relaxing the, the cramps from the visceral muscles and the bronchies. Me? Vix? Vix is very strong, isn't it? If you have a flu or just your nose is somehow closed and you are healthy, no problem at all. It's fine. It helps you. If you have inflammation of the airways, and within TB you have that, maybe Wix is too strong. If you buy the normal Wix, there is a lot of chemical substance in it, and it can be irritating to a sick bronchi. To a normal healthy bronchi with a bit of flu, or uh, some, yeah, flu, it's no problem. But you see already with asthma patients, sometimes asthmatic patients, they don't tolerate weeks. It's too strong. 
it's somehow scratching on the member's membrane. The same for TB. There is some more biological weeks. An Indian, the Indians, they make it. It's a very little bottle like this. You open it and you put it on your handkerchief. And then you just smell. It will be good for two days at least. And this wicks is made by natural products. It's much less irritating. But it's not easy to get, but sometimes maybe in Buta Buta in an Indian shop. Ask them for the Indian wicks. You will see little bottles like this. And it is number one. It's really good. But for these cases, this very weak TB patient, don't use aggressive things. So I go to the next eucalyptus globulus tree, I choose the nice leaves, I put it in the pillowcase, I do in the eucalyptus oil as a rubbing, and uh, we do some steam inhalation. That's already nice, it's okay, it's fine. Some people use lengana. Lengana is already strong, as you know. You can put it into the nostril, that's fine. But when you have TB, probably in, in that phase when the patient is very weak, probably it's already too strong. How is the Indian what? Hmm? Indian Vicks. Indian Vicks. Uh, so Vicks is strong, but Lengana, to just the herb. Indian what? Indian Vicks. Indian Vicks. Yeah, it has another name, but that one he will understand easily what it is. I can send you the proper name of it because I have it at home. I have a friend, he goes always to India and he brought it home. It's, I can hear lean, something like this, Lia lean, something like this it's called. And it's very famous. In India you can buy it everywhere, they told me. So therefore, probably in an Indian shop you have it. But for TB patient, the weak TB patient, it's too strong. So this is the physio for the weak patient. And we just do it gently, individually. A weak patient always refuses to come to the group. He says, no, I'm, I'm sick, I cannot. Uh, maybe he tries and he says, it's tough to them. It's not possible. So we go to the patient. And we do it very gentle, one-to-one, -one, personalized physio to the weak TB patient. Normally, a week, 10 days, and that weak patient has improved. The TB medicine works, he has enough food, he was resting, he got physio, things go better. And then he will come into the second group. The second group of patients is not the weak patient, but it's not the advanced patient who is already quite good. He somehow still a sick person, but is mobilized. That patient goes out of bed, is moving in the room, sitting on a chair, maybe going to the corridor, maybe put his nose out of the house, but he's not going for a walk. You don't have to call them at the gate by the hospital or somewhere. Uh -uh. They are always close range to the bed, but they are mobile, they move now. They are still weak. They are still in this kyphotic posture. They walk slowly. You see it immediately, they walk slow. They're not running around. They don't talk a lot because talking makes them tired. They have still difficulty with breathing. They're sitting there, going there, looking a bit outside, maybe at the shadow, a little bit outside of the house, things like this. And quite often you find them in the bed during the day. They can do some active exercises, but not for a long time. They get tired. When they cough, they say, oh, I have pain. These are as well the patients, they start to complain, oh, the injection makes me pain here, makes me pain there, because they got already some of these injections. And again, more injection they have, more they're complaining about the pain. Mm. Maybe they are complaining of numb 
feet, pins and needles, this polyneuropathy due to the drugs. So this patient, we have to consider specially as well. We give him one-to-one -one physio if they are not able to participate to the group. But we will do exercises in sitting. We are no longer doing really on the bed the physio. No, the patient is mobile. We do them in sitting, simple, gentle exercises in sitting for shoulder girdle, the arm, the chest, the knees, the feet. We do deep breathing exercises. We give them again and again and again cuff instructions. We use the straw. And maybe we do stand up, sit down exercises with them as well, that they're just getting a little bit stronger in the thigh. Because they don't walk around because they are weak in the muscles and their respiration, their, their respiratory activity is not so good. So we train them already a little bit. We don't overforce these people. When they say, oh, now I'm really tired, then I say, okay, let's stop. But if they say after two times lifting up the arm, they say, oh, holy kind, holy kind. They say, no, let's, another time. Then we force them a little bit when they give up too early. Because sometimes when you are not moving for a long time, even two movements is too much. But you have to say, no, do it more, and then it will become easier. You become flexible by moving. You get strong by moving. You don't get strong by not moving. So in this case, we have to consider if he gives up too early, tell him, let's do it once more. So very gently you invite him to do a little bit more. You remember in the weak group, we're not forcing them at all. But this one, we are not forcing them really. But we invite them to do a little bit more. But when they are tired, that means they are tired. And what you can see in this case, in the second group, they have good days. Then you think, oh, things are going better, they can move, and then they have a bad day. Really a bad day. Oh, they are weak again, maybe they are vomiting, maybe they have pain, maybe they are coughing a lot. They say, oh, it's like a setback. But the day later they are okay again. So they have this instability of their well-being. Have you observed that with these patients? They have good days, they have bad days. The very weak ones, they have only bad days. This one, they have good days and they have bad days. In a bad day, you have to do less. In a good day, you can push a little bit more. So you always have to see how is the daily condition of the patient. If they are quite fine, do a little bit more. If they are weak, do less as, as you have done yesterday. Adjust the program, adjust the program. If you do like this, they will comply. If you are not adapting to the, to the daily condition in their in, uh, they will refuse. Still, this patient will have joint pain, rib pain, muscle pain due to that coughing. Give them gentle massage, even in sitting. Sitting posture, you give them a back massage. Use again eucalyptus oil, fine. Now, when you see they are already quite good, you can invite them to come to the TB group. You say, come in the TB group, participate. When you feel too tired, feel free to stop and just watch what the others are doing. If you feel good to do the exercise, do them. But already come into the group, join the group. So they are free to participate as much as they can. And they know they can stop but they are already in the group, so they know the other members, they see the other one is maybe coughing as well, this one has pain as well, this one is better, so probably tomorrow I will be better as well. So it's encouraging being in the group. But in the group of the week, as so a middle one, group two, they can participate as they can. And this normally takes a week, maybe 10 days, but a week, they are somewhere in between. They are not weak and they are not really already improved. 
Now the third group is the group of the really improved patient. How is that patient? That patient is mobile. He stands up in the morning, he is washing himself, he is dressing himself. Uh, you can see him very often, most of the time that patient is somewhere. If you need him, you don't find him in the room. You find him outside, in the shadow of the tree, maybe at the shop, maybe at the hospital. They're moving around. They are talking, they are socializing with people. At Tabatseka there is a tree. I always find them there chatting together. Or they are li lying somewhere in the shadow. Or the, at the gate up there. They go up there. And I like when they go up there because it's a little bit up the hill, so they have to breathe and then they come down. So they move around. You have to give them an appointment for the treatment. I say, hey, at nine o'clock, I expect you to be here. There is exercise. They said, oh, Riatla, Riatla. <laughs> They're moving. The weak patient and the moderate patient, you don't have to give them appointment. You find them all the time. But this one, they start to move. So they are mobile, they are going outside, they are already a lot in the sun, in the, in the fresh air outside, they are socializing, and they are quite good in the personal skills. Personal skills means washing themselves, dressing themselves, eating, taking care for themselves. They already start to deal with business at home, making contact with home and dealing with this and that. So you know this type of patient. Um, some of these patients, they already think they are cured. Probably because these injections are so painful, they could do without. So they have to argue sometimes with the nurses. Okay. Now, these patients, as they walk, they are already a bit more upright. The weak patient and the moderate patient, they are always flexed. And this one is already more upright, but quite often you find them stiff on the chest, and stiff on the shoulders. They have pains on the back and the shoulders. Now they move and they can feel that they're stiff, so they have pains. Stiffness results in pain. And still they are not so really strong, they are not really trained in the muscles. But as they have done already quite a few exercises and so things are going better. So for this patient, I do daily the group with them. They join the TB exercise class. We give them exercise for good posture, for mobilization of the chest, the ribs, the shoulders. We give them exercise to deep breathing, and we give them exercise to become stronger in the muscle. We do really training of the legs, training of the arms, that they are a bit more stronger in the muscle, they are weak. So it's really physical training that they gain muscle power. And we do that even a little bit long. The ex exercise class with them takes at least 20 minutes. They're really exercising. It's not only a few movements and then it's enough, like with the weak patient. They exercise so that the muscle get trained. And they work with the straw as well. And I really engage them that they are going outside to the sun. They need sun. All patients with infections, but particular TB patient, they benefit when they are in sunlight. Sun is stimulating vitamin D, Vitamin D is stimulating the macrophages, these are cells, which are eating the TB bacterium. So, infection patients, they need sunshine. If you are enough in the sun, your immune system gets stronger. This is important. When I was a child, I remember very good, in the mountains we had the TB clinics. There was a lot of TB in Europe too. My father had TB as well when he was a boy. So the TB medicine was not there at this time. There was no antibiotics and so the 50s. So what they did, they sent TB patients up to the mountain, place like Tabatseka. They had big hospitals, TB hospitals. So they gave them TB physiotherapy. 
They gave them the proper food to eat, good food, because some of them were malnourished. And they put them outside to the veranda. They had nice verandas, like here, Sebocha Hospital, the same. It looks like the same. So the veranda, they were to the south where the sun came. They had to be outside in the sun on the veranda for hours every day. Even in winter, they had the beds there. And so they were covered with blankets, but here the face and the arms were in the sunshine. They had to be a lot in the sun, and that helped to improve. For two, three months, they were up in the mountains, fresh, dry air, sunshine, good food, movements, and some medical treatment. This was the TB treatment 1950 in Switzerland, and it worked. For three months. Yeah, they were at least three months there in these clinics when they were sick because there was no antibiotic. Now there are the antibiotics, but sunshine, movement, good food is still helpful today. Everything which generates health is welcome. So therefore I say, Let's move enough to this exercise, do deep breathing for oxygen your body, to stretch, stretch your, your spine and go outside to the sun. Whenever it is possible in Tabatseka, we do the exercise class outside. There is a veranda in front of TB World. All out, chairs out, sitting there. Even if there is a little bit of wind, if there is a strong wind, we cannot do it outside because TB patients are very sensitive to wind, as you noticed when it's too windy, because there is dust in the air, and then it's scratching them the bronchi, and then they cough. So they avoid windy situations. It's right, they should avoid it. But if there is not really a wind, we exercise outside to be in the fresh air and sunshine. And here in Sebocchi, you have this, this veranda in front of the rooms, isn't it? Yes. It's nice. The Swiss hospital in the mountain, they look like Sebocchi hospital made by stones like this, and all the patients' room, they are to the sunny side of the hospital, and there is a veranda, so they can sit on the veranda. Yeah, they are still there, this hospital. Now they're using it for other things, but uh, they were these uh, special clinics for pulmonary problems, pulmonary TB. Now they are rehabilitation clinics. So this patient, we really invite him to go out and to move. What we do for all three types of patient, whenever it is possible, teach them to lie on the belly every day. The weak one has difficulty to do that. But if it is possible, start already. If it is not possible, wait. But as soon as possible, TB patient should lie every day, in the morning, in the afternoon, for 15 minutes on the belly. So you are stretching the spine this kyphosis will be stretched, that you are stretched. When you are straight in your spine, your chest is open. If you are always flexed like this, the chest is closed and the lung is not ventilating deeply. You understand? It's no. easy. When we are sitting like this, chest is closed. Try. Just slump. When you touch your ribs, can you feel the ribs? They are one on top of the other. Now, try to breathe in deeply while sitting slumped. Can you breathe deeply? Not at all. Now, come up, touch your ribs. Are the ribs still together? Or is there a space in between? Okay, now breathe in deeply. Can you breathe deeply? Yes, we can. Yes. When you are straight, the chest is open. When you are slumped in this position, chest is closed. If chest is always closed, only a little part of the lung is ventilated. The other is not. When there is no air coming into the lung, the germs will grow more. If there is ventilation, and you clean these airways, germs can grow less easily. Therefore, <coughs> we have to ventilate. So I tell them, lie on the belly, so stretch your spine. You have seen chronic TBs, they are all like this. Those who are exercised, they are straight. 
I always give them the example, the role model of Nelson Mandela. You have seen pictures of Mandela. Yes. Have you seen how straight this man is? Did you notice picture from Nelson Mandela? He's always in upright posture. <laughs> have you noticed that? Yes. You know, I have my physio friends, they tell me, if you want to see a man with a good posture, an old man with a good posture, look at Nelson Mandela. <laughs> and I say, you are right. In his books, I, I love to read books from Mandela. Since 10 years I'm reading Mandela's books. He very often makes a comment to posture. He tells how important it is to have a good posture and to represent, to be strong and straight. A straight man, non-broken man. So he puts it more on a humanistic level. He did exercise, I told you already, I care about the exercise of Mandela. He did exercise every morning in the cell. 200 push-ups, 200 squattings. I'm crying after 30 squattings. He did 200 and 200 push-ups on the fingertips. Not like this. I'm not able to do one. Like this I can do 50. But he did on the fingertips 200. And then 200, yeah. 200 squattings and 200 abdominal exercises. Because he was a boxer. He was there in the prison and he couldn't do anything. And he was jogging on the spot for 45 minutes a day. He could not run around in the prison, but so he was jogging in his room. Yes, he liked Muffy. Yeah. Very simple. And he liked Muff. So exercising, being straight, means opens the lungs. So I say to people, try to have a good posture like Mandela. They always say, Mandela, good posture. And if you have a picture, show them. Mandela is really a good role model. Okay? And if Mandela, being in prison for 27 years, could do these exercises in that little room, we all can do it. And you can see it, he's, up to, he's really a straight person, even being old. So posture is something, is attitude, is behavior. You can get used to be like this, and you can be used to be straight, like Mandela says. It's possible, it's just something you have to exercise. So this TB patient, we have to take care that they get back to good posture, because the sickness makes them flex, and when they are flexed, the ribs are squeezed, the lung is closed, and there is not enough ventilation, so TB will heal even less good. If we bring them up, they have more oxygen in the lung, there is more healing power in the body, they breathe better, they are stronger, then they can be called more active, they're moving around, so it will be helpful. Is that understandable? Yes. It's not complicated, okay? <coughs> To bring that over to the patient, sometimes it's complicated. So I just, with a lot of loving kindness, insist. I don't force them too much, but I insist. You know, every day, a drop in the ocean, the ocean will become bigger. Every day, a drop of water on a stone, after a time, that stone will have a hole. Just trust. Continuously you go on, just go the road, give the, patient, give the patient hope. Really give them hope, help them to build up hope, because suffering without hope is terrible. If you are sick and suffer, but you have a light of hope, things become easier. That hope we are inducing to them, because we have seen many patients, I know it works like this, I say, Try, let's try today again. Even yesterday you didn't succeed. We try again today. You will see tomorrow you succeed. Give them a light of hope. Then things come. So with loving kindness and a lot of patience, I insist smoothly and things will come better. And that's okay. Now another thing to TB patient, especially in the group. With the individual when they are very sick, it's not possible. But in the group. Use singing. I'm in my second profession, a music therapist. So for us, singing is medicine. So 
on the beginning of the group, let's sing a song. For closing the group, let's sing a song. Singing is opening the lungs. When you sing, you breathe. When you sing a song which is engaging you, a happy song, it makes you lively. Blood circulation will go. Positive hormones will be in the blood. You will be happy. And the lungs are opening. Singing is uniting. When you're singing in the group, you have the feeling not to be alone, you're together. It's psychologically very helpful singing. So, singing is a resource. And singing for TB patients helps to use the lung. Use it. Here everybody can sing, isn't it? So, use their traditional song. They have all that types of song. Mainly these are bondate, okay? So maybe they have the song from Motebon, maybe they have the song from the school, maybe they have the song from the mines, whatever. Maybe they are a church song. It's okay. So let's say a song, what shall we sing today in Date? And in Date we start to sing. You invite them and we sing. Let's sing a song in the beginning, opening song and a closing song. It gets somehow a ceremonial touch of that what you're doing. And I noticed in the mountain, and mainly for elderly people, it's important that you have a ritual. That things somehow are ceremonial. Then it works. If you say, now we do a physio, we do exercise, one, two, three, it's strange to them. But if you put it in a ritual way, you somehow celebrate that moment. You honor their effort, what they are doing, and you honor that they are participating, even they are sick and it's difficult and so If you put it in a ceremonial way, in a ritual way, that means you have the opening song, you have the closing song. Very often these are blessing songs they are choosing. It's wonderful. It helps them. It's cultural sensitive, as I say. Let's be sensitive to the culture of the patient. If you have old people from the mountains, they have lived another life. If you have young people from Maseru, they have lived another life. Okay? A young boy maybe from Maseru is not interested on circumcision school songs. But maybe these Bundate, they were shepherds the whole life. For them, they feel at home in this song. Do you understand the difference? Mm -hmm. So let's be sensitive to the culture of the person. It will help to motivate them. So that initial song, we are not used to sing in the hospital, maybe for prayer, but not for treatment. But where we use singing in the hospital, things improve. And even the staff feels good. I always can see when they, they can hear the patient singing, or in male ward sometimes we sing a song to activate, when we do activation exercise to activate. I remember it was when was it here, my Ritability, two years ago when I was here, or three years ago, we were working on the ward and uh, we were singing and doing activation exercise. There was an old man who was only lying like this in the bed. But when they were singing with the arm, he was directing, <laughs> at least showing the rhythm. And he was so passive, he didn't move. And he said, look, that man is participating now, doing like this with the arm. Yeah. <laughs> So, we can use singing to open the lungs and with the improved TB patient, normally it works very well. This is the program for hospitalized TB patients. I would love to have a set of exercises and physio instructions to the outpatient, also the TB patient who just comes for instruction to the hospital. It would be nice when the TB coordinator could include a special TB physio to be done at home. Sometimes when somebody has a lot of uh, sputum still or problems with the lung, we are instructing family members to do the home-based physio at home, but it's very rarely. But I'm sure those patients who are not attending the hospital to be cured, because many 
are not coming to the hospital, they are just cured as an outpatient. It would be good if they have standard exercises for respiratory, for flexibility, for their postures, this type of instruction about movements. We still can develop that and introduce that. But that's what I told you now, this is TB Physio for the hospital.